What's up, everybody? It's your man, KJ the Great. And I, before I get started, I just want to say I hope and pray everything is great your way. And welcome to the first video, first episode of All Sports Media. Little introductory, I will be covering, with this channel, we'll be covering all the major sports here in America, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, swimming, Olympic sports, boxing, MMA, golf, all those type of sports. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll be giving you my takes on what I feel. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, drop a comment in the comment section, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Um, I'll be giving you predictions on who I think will win, who I think will lose, why I think such and such will win, why I think such and such will lose. I'll be giving you all the new updates on fights. Uh, when it comes to football, I'll do most of my football updates on Wednesdays. That way I can give you the predictions for the Thursday games, the Sunday games, and the Monday games that follow. And then I'll give you a follow-up video on who won, who lost, and what I think so and so forth. With basketball since and baseball, since there's so many games, you know, I'll periodically give you updates on trades and what's what, who's who, who's to know. Um, with football, I mean, uh, excuse me, with uh boxing and MMA sports, such like that. Um, I'll give you videos about who's who, who to know, and who's signed to where, who's going to fight who, uh, when those fights are coming up, who do I feel are going to win those fights and why, uh, predictions on who will win or lose, um, potential fights. I'll give you updates about you know press conferences and what was said outside of those press conferences, in and out, uh, you know, updates on all of that. Track and field, I'll just give you updates as those events come about. You know, they have those events year round. I'll let you know who's who, who to look for, um, who's on top, you know, uh, who, what, uh, what major events are coming up for track and field. The same with every other sport, etc., etc. So, with this first video, um, give you a little bit of background on me. Uh, I grew up North Tulsa, Greenwood District, North Tulsa, further than that. Um, I used to box, used to do karate, played football, I swim, played in the jazz band, played alto saxophone, um, you know, uh, jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife, whatever you want to call it, that's what I was. Um, so where I'm at now in life, you know, just making the best of everything and bringing all the sports news that I can to you guys, because I love sports, just like you love sports. Um, I know everybody's busy throughout their day, so they can't watch all the big time TV shows where the analysts get together and do their thing. So, you know, you can chime in at any point, hear my take. Give your take in the comments, and we'll go back and forth on who's who, what's what, whatever the case may be. So, with this first video, I wanted to talk about boxing. As you can see, I got my Everlast bag in the back. I hit it, every, hit it from time to time every now and then, keep myself in shape, keep myself sharp. Uh, but I want to talk about the biggest fight in boxing today. Yes, the biggest fight in boxing today between none other than number one pound for pound boxer, Terrence Bud Crawford, who is 38 wins, no losses, no draws, 29, way, 29 wins by way of knockout. Um, he will be, <clears throat> he is a, the WBO champion, World Boxing Organization champion, and is heading into his biggest fight of his career with none other than Errol the True Spence Jr., who is 28 wins, no losses, no draws, 22 wins by way of knockout. Um, he is the WBC, WBA, IBF World Welterweight Champion. This is undisputed in the four belt era. And I want y'all to understand there's four belts in this era, including the lineal title and the ring magazine title. 
There is no belt for the lineal title, and the Ring Magazine's t title has been around since the 1920s when they first started awarding champions. Whenever the Ring Magazine title gets involved, uh, typically there's lineage on the line, but in other videos I'll explain all of that. But for right now, this is the biggest uh, fight in boxing. Hands down, this uh, event should do nowhere less than 500,000 to a million pay-per-view buys. Everybody wants to see this fight for the past um, five years, hands down. Um, so give your takes on who you think will win. I'll give my takes on who I think will win. And this tip, in this type of fight, you got two fighters who have every tool in the tool chest to win this fight. Terrence Crawford, he is a switch hitter. He is everything you can think of as a boxer, three division world champion, former undisputed junior welterweight champion, former lightweight WBO champion. He has everything you can think of that a boxer should bring to the table. He high ring IQ, high boxing skill set. He knows uh, how to make adjustments throughout fights. He can do it all. He can move well, footwork out of this world. And the same thing goes for Earl Spence. Uh, high ring IQ, great footwork, but the difference is Earl Spence is more of a pressure fighter. And Terrence Crawford, while he can apply pressure, he has never been a straight come forward type of fighter. He is his best when he is at range or at mid range. And when he's at range, he can switch from orthodox to southpaw. He's knocked out people with both hands, and that's where he is great at. When he's at mid-range, as long as he's in one stance, he can take it to you however you feel, and he can knock you out with either hand in that sense. You can go back and look at what he did to uh, Yurik Yoas Gamboa. When he, he knocked him out with his right hand, and he was switching in that fight from Southpaw to Orthodox. And uh, you can go back and look at when he fought Sean, Showtime Sean Porter. He switched from Orthodox to Southpaw, uh, knocked him down twice before the towel was thrown in. Um, he, he's a great fighter. He's number one pound for pound, and he is that for a reason. Earl Spence, um, you look at Earl Spence, he's a Southpaw, and he is a pressure fighter, and he stays. The difference is he stays on you throughout the entire fight. He do, he does not let up, and if you look at his punch stats from his last five fights, his work rate increases throughout the fight, which is difficult for anybody because typically um, fighters in their in the early rounds they throw the most punches and then they pick their shots, or the work rate gets to a point where it stays consistent. That's not the case with Earl Spence. You look at his last fight with Cuban star boxer you, uh, Udanis Ugas. From the first round to the 12th round, Errol Spence, his work rate just looked like a stock market. It was just going up, going up. In one round, <clears throat> he threw about 30, 40 punches and probably hit Ugas about 20 to 25 times in one round. Um, for me, in my opinion, I believe that is one reason why Earl Spence will win this fight. Um, his work rate is just something that Terrence Crawford has never had to deal with. Um, he has never seen a fighter like this. Granted, neither one of them have seen a fighter like each other. But styles make fights. Hear that again. Neither one of them have seen a fighter like each other. Prime for prime. But style makes fights fights. Earl Spence, what I think he will do is in those early rounds, he will win those early rounds. Why? Because Terrence Crawford typically is a slow starter. And I'm not saying Terrence Crawford won't win any rounds. I'm not saying that. I'm saying those early rounds where Terrence Crawford has been known to slow start, those are where Errol Spence sets the tone. And when he sets the tone, that tone increases. He stays on you. He can stay in the pocket. His jab is great. I mean, <clears throat> you look how great his jab is. Look what he did to us. British star boxer Kell Brook. Broke his orbital bone. 
made him take a knee in about the 10th or 11th round. Uh, you know, look at what he did to Ugas. Uh, he forced the fight to be stopped, broke his orbital bone, broke his nose, and broke his ribs. I mean, the guy's jab and his footwork and ability to move and pressure you from round one to round 12 is just almost unheard of. That's my reason. Um, <clears throat> I think it will go to, um, with this fight, if Earl Spence is able to dictate that type of tone and Crawford does not make the necessary adjustments, which I think he will, but if he doesn't, we could be looking at a 10th round, maybe 11th round stoppage, uh, depending on how that jab gets into place. Um, because even if you look at the fight with Uriokas Gamboa and Terrence Crawford, although Terrence Crawford started slow, he started winning some late rounds. But look at what Gamboa was doing. He was working his way and picking his shots. And he was he was hitting Terrence Crawford more than anybody's hit Terrence Crawford. Uh, not more, but almost as much as anybody has hit Terrence Crawford. I mean, he stung him up real good. You know, everybody gets those little pop knots from not time to time. But... That's what he was able to do. Errol Spence, he takes advantage of those, and he hits with power. He moves and creates angles. If you look at the way he was throwing the angles on Udanis Ugas, he was literally hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, and then he started to target that eye. And when that eye started to swell up, that's what he was setting up, boom, boom, and coming over and then switching and throwing those uppercuts. Throwing those uppercuts to the body, breaking the ribs, breaking the orbital, or, orbital bone, and breaking his nose. Those are some things that Errol Spence does well. Um, <clears throat> this, it, apparently, they signed for a two-fight deal. The first fight will be November 19th. Um, I expect Errol Spence to win. I at first thought it, he could win unanimous uh, on the judges' cards, but uh, I'm going to say Earl Spence in the first fight by split decision. Um, you could say one judge will probably score 115-113, another one will have it 115-113, and the other judge will probably have it 114-113 for Crawford. That'll be the split in Earl's favor. The second fight, um, <clears throat> because they'll know each other better, I believe that will come down to more of a uh, who can outlast or who can throw the best, who can make better adjustments than the first fight. I still believe Earl Spence could probably win two fights against Terrence Crawford. And I'm saying that because if you look at their last five fights and the level of opposition, Earl Spence has hands down fought the better opposition. They both fought Kell Brook. Terrence Crawford fought Kell Brook years after Errol Spence. They both fought and beat and dropped Showtime Sean Porter. Uh, Showtime Sean Porter had already said it. Win or lose to Terrence Crawford, he was done. Errol Spence has beat Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia. I mean, you just look at that. It just tells you that he's fought the better opposition. Um... Uh, Terrence Crawford, he's fought Ricky Burns, Ricky Owens Gamboa, Jose Benavidez Jr. He's, he's fought some good, really good opposition. But I feel that Earl Spence's opposition has been just a step up outside of you, Ugas. Um, I believe Terrence Crawford could stop Ugas as well. So that's my take. That's all I got for this first video. Drop a uh, comment in the comment section. Hit the like button. Uh, hit the bell icon to get all the new videos. You know, let me know what y'all think. Once again, I'm KJ the Great. Follow me on Instagram at All Sports Media 09. One word. All Sports Media on YouTube. Follow me on in my other Instagram at KJ the Great 09. Once again. I'm KJ the Great. I pray and hope everything is great your way. Stay tuned for the next video.